Hello everybody, this is Abu Abayda from Najran University, College of Medicine, Pathology Department. Today I'm going to be talking about cell death. Actually, this is a very important topic and you have to learn it fully. First of all, you have to know what is the definition of cell death. Actually, as you see here, cell death means loss of biological activity of the cell and change in its morphology. So, if this is a cell, you see that and there is a stress here on this cell, especially in cases of severe stress, this cell has two pathways. Number one, to die or to adapt. So, if the cell fails to adapt, I mean failure of adaptation results in cell death. So, here, failure of adaptation plus loss of biological activity plus change in the morphology of cell. And actually, this change of in the morphology of cell, this is maybe a broad area, and so I will talk about it later on. Actually, when cell, I mean cell death, take place, it will take place by two pathways. Number one is called necrosis. The other one is called apoptosis. So here you see that we have two pathways for cell to die. Necrosis and apoptosis. And actually, both of these pathways have a lot of different features. And you see this table which differentiate which of which. I mean differentiate between necrosis and apoptosis. And let us start by the first point which differentiate between necrosis and apoptosis. You see here number of cells. You see that in necrosis there is a large group of cells. I mean dying of large group of cells. While in apoptosis uh, it, it means death of a single cell or very small group of cells here. Number two, I mean the second point which differentiate between necrosis and apoptosis is the control of the process, the whole process. So you see here in necrosis there is no gene control while in apoptosis is a genetic control mechanism. That is to say there is a specific gene within the cell. So activation of this gene results in what's called apoptosis. So apoptosis is a programmed cell death. We can say it is a programmed cell death, programmed by this genetic stimulation. The third point which differentiate between necrosis and apoptosis you see here, rupture of cells. That is to say in necrosis there is complete rupture of cell, complete lysis and disintegration of the whole cell. I mean the content of the cell inside the cell, the nucleus and the membrane, will, will, all of them will be uh, lysis. The second point here you see in apoptosis, no lysis, only fragmentation. You see here this is a cell and within the cell the nucleus will be fragmented and every fragment have part of the membrane which is called apoptotic body. Here you see formation of apoptotic body. Okay. I will talk about this mechanism later on in the area of apoptosis. Number four, or the fourth uh, feature here, tissue reaction. You see in necrosis, round necrosis, if this is for example the leg or whatsoever, any organ, and there is necrosis, necrosis here, this is necrosis, you will find that there is inflammatory reaction around, or inflammatory cells around the necrotic area, while in apoptosis, apoptosis there is no inflammation or no tissue reaction around it. The fifth point, which is also a very important feature here, energy consumption. You will find that in necrosis, this is a passive process. So no need, no ATP consumption. Okay? While here in apoptosis, this is an active process. That is to say it needs ATP. So it is an active process. And this is a very important point to differentiate between the two pathways of death. The sixth point, I mean the last point here, type of stimuli. You see in necrosis is a pathological uh, uh, stimuli, only a pathological stimuli, stimuli. While apoptosis, here necrosis, a pathological stimuli, apoptosis will be physiological or pathological stimuli. And these are, this is very important table which differentiate between necrosis and apoptosis and I think it is very important for you, you have to learn them by heart. Okay, let us go over necrosis and apoptosis one by one, starting by necrosis. Here you see, what is the definition of necrosis? 
Necrosis, it means it is some sort of pathway, cell, cell death pathway. That is to say, death of large group of cells. Here you see necrosis, large group of cells. Of, so here, large group of cells in a living tissue. So if this is a neck, necrotic area, the other tissue here is living tissue, while this is dead tissue. So here you see it is in a living tissue, large group of cells in a living tissue by its own enzyme or by enzymes from outside. That is to say, this cell is lysed, completely lysed. This is due to enzymatic activity from within the cell or from outside the, of the cell. That is to say, autolysis or heterolysis. Autolysis by the, their own enzyme. Heterolysis by enzyme from outside, like inflammatory cell, neutrophil, isinophil, lymphocyte, macrophages, or whatsoever here. Okay, so here this is the definition of necrosis. Death of large group of cells in a living tissue by autolysis or heterolysis. Okay, let us go over the next point, which is the morphology of necrosis. I mean, how could we recognize there is, change, there is necrotic changes here in this tissue, for example? And this is most probably you see the tissue under the microscope, and then whether it's light microscope or electron microscope, and so you will find some sort of changes, cytoplasmic changes or nucleic changes. Actually, let us go over the cytoplasmic changes. Starting by the first point here, isinophilia. That is to say, if this is a cytoplasm, you will find red or pink color when you stain the tissue with H and E stain. H stands for hematoxylin, E for eosine. It's called H and E stain, which is a routine stain used for histopathology. So here in necrosis, you will find there is red or isinophilic cytoplasm. Moreover, this is the first point. And this is xenophilia due to RNA. Here you will find there is a lot of RNA in the cytoplasm, and this due to dispersion of uh, endoplasmic reticulum, ribosomes from endoplasmic reticulum, or from the nucleus here, it will get outside the nucleus, so this RNA will give us this redness, or isenophilia. The second point here you see, there is a lot of vacuolation here in the cytoplasm, and this vacuolation you see here in the cytoplasm, and these changes are found in all irreversible changes, we will talk about it in irreversible cell injury, you see. Number three, sometimes you will find myelin figure, and that is to say, you will find world bodies like this due to clotted protein or denatured protein. So here, the whole protein, intracellular protein, will be denatured and world like this, giving what's called myelin figure. And sometimes all the cell will be filled with this myelin figure. The second point here, this is nucleic changes, okay? So, there is, these are changes that take place within the nucleus, starting by the first one, karyorexis. What does it mean, karyorexis? Karyorexis, sorry, karyolysis, first of all, karyolysis. Karyolysis, it means lysis of chromatin, lysis of the Chromatic, chromatinic material which is found within the nucleus here. Karyo, it means chromatin, or it means chromatin. Lysis, it means disintegration, it means disintegration of this chromatinic material. Number two, karyorexis. What does it mean, karyorexis? It means fragmentation of the chromatinic material. So, if this is a nucleus, it will be fragmented like this, so it will be more than one part. And this is a cytoplasm. Karyorexis, fragmentation of the chromatinic material. The last point here, pycnosis. What does it mean, pycnosis? Pycnosis, it means condensation of chromatinic material inside the cell. So it will be very small, condensed like this, okay? Darkly, darkly stained chromatinic material and very small condensed material like this okay so these are the cytological changes and nucleic changes of necrosis let us go over the next point which is very important point what are the mechanism of 
necrosis. Actually, we have three mechanisms for necrosis. Let us start by the first one. It's hypoxia. I mean, there is reduction in oxygen inside the cell. So the metabolism here will be uh, anaerobic glycolysis. So as a result of that, there is increased lactic acid. And this is, will decrease the pH of the cell. So reduction of the pH will make a lot of changes here within the cell. That is to say the metabolic pathways of the cell will be completely changed. So this is mainly affecting the metabolism of the cell due to hypoxia and cellular acetosis. The next point here you see calcium influx. That is to say increase of calcium in the cytoplasm. This is a nucleus, this is cytoplasm. Calcium here will be increased. Why? Due to influx of this calcium from different organelles within the cell. Like mitochondria here, you see this is the mitochondria. So the, comp the content of the mitochondria will get outside here and will increase the calcium. Also from endoplasmic reticulum. So increase intracellular calcium uh, will activate a lot of enzymes here in the cell, like lipases. You see that lipase will be activated. Endonucleases. So it will activate the, the chromatinic material, the nucleus. Phospholipases and proteases. So it will result in destruction and rupture of this membrane. And even the organelle. Uh, membranes also will be disintegrated and lysis. So the last point here, let us go over the last point, accumulation of ROS. What does it mean, ROS? Reactive oxygen species, R stand, stand for reactive, O for oxygen, S for species. What are they? These are free radicals. So there is a lot of free radicals here inside the cell. What are these free radicals? Like hydrogen peroxide. H2O2 or hydroxyl group OH or uh, superoxide that is to say O3 and these are free radicals which result in destruction of the membranes also so all of these changes uh, the end of them or the end of all of them is destruction of the membrane and change in the metabolism of the cell that is the most important point for this session I will talk further uh, about the topic in the next uh, session. Thank you very much for watching.